Now, Moscow's invasion of Ukraine has sparked discussions on whether there should be broader consequences for all Russian citizens. Some EU countries want to bar them from travelling into the bloc for shopping and holidays. From September, Finland plans to significantly cut the numbers of tourist visas it usually issues to Russians. DW travelled to one small border town to see what effect this is likely to have. Pekka Kunas is getting his beloved old fire truck into shape for a classic car show in the neighbouring village. The ex-firefighter lives in Vertsila, on the border with Russia. The neighbourhood has prospered for decades. But now it's all over. Those of us who live here, right on the border, don't trust Russia anymore. It's like having a big predator right over there. You're not really afraid, but you have to keep an eye on this predator, Russia, every day that you live here. The nearest border crossing is only five minutes by car. Several hundred cars a day pass through it. Those who come to Finland from Russia don't always stay. Many use Finland as a transit country to the west. I'm right in front of the Finnish-Russian border. For Russians, it's one of the last few doorways into the European Union. For now, this doorway is still open. But for how much longer? Finland now wants to change its Russia-friendly visa policy and let far fewer Russians into the country. Pekka Kunas thinks that's right, even though the area he lives in has long benefited from Russian tourists. All the people at the vintage car show are locals. Many here support their government's plans. It's very good that ordinary people understand what kind of leadership they have. In principle, the government should be like the people. It's the right thing to do. A state attacked another sovereign state. So you should limit the number of Russians here and use that as a sanction tool, and hopefully that will improve the situation. But many Russians have harsh criticism for this push to ban Russian tourists from the West. They say that it's unfair to generalize and to punish everyone. I wonder about it. For 44 years of my life, I thought the freedom to travel was a right. Now I'm told this right is actually a privilege. In any case, it will be very difficult for me to only see my friends in the West online now. A decline in Russian tourism would also have negative effects here, says Pekka Kunas, here at the vintage car show near the Russian border. But that's not his greatest concern. It's more important to live in peace here, very close to the border, and not have to worry about what's coming from over there in the east. It's still unclear whether a ban on Russian travelers will happen. But either way, what used to be a good relationship between neighboring countries that share a thousand kilometer long border has been damaged for years. Right, let's bring in Lena Dupont. She's a member of the European Parliament for the German Christian Democrats and she sits on the Parliament's Committee on Civil Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs. Uh, do you think an EU-wide visa ban for Russian tourists would be a good idea? Well, let me first of all say that, uh, of course, it's up to the member states neighboring uh, Russia in that regard to, of course, have their own philosophy of um, visa policy. But indeed, in the current situation that we are in, it would be good to have at least a minimum coordinated approach at European level. And I think that it is, it is indeed a quite good instrument that should be used and it follows also, let me say, a bit out of the, um, the logic that we had put on they on the sanction package, so it would be a good way of also, um, uh, let's say, support our own message, message from the European Union to Russia. So you're in saying regard. you're in favour of a visa ban? I think it, it is an instrument that needs to be discussed because, of course, we do have different um, um, opinions on that, and that's why the foreign affairs ministers have that on their agenda. But I fully understand and support the approach by the, especially by the Baltic region to have that instrument and how to make use of it. 
OK, your party, the CDU, the Conservatives, is in the opposition here in Germany at the moment, and the German Chancellor has spoken out against a visa ban because he thinks it would target the wrong people. Here's a, uh, the quote what Scholz actually said in an interview a few days ago. This is not the war of the Russian people. It is Putin's war. Do you agree, after all, he seems to have some substantial support among ordinary Russians? <laughs> I would say we, we have to look at two things. Um, if we look at a visa ban, we can, of course, have a gradual approach to that. If you ban touristic visas, it nevertheless means that you have open ways for humanitarian grounds, that you have the um, possibility of asylum uh, claims at the border and so on and so forth. So it, it is a quite targeted uh, instrument that we can use mm -hmm. or that we can make use of. And in addition to that, I think uh, it's also a, one of the probably most important, let's say, soft instruments we have at hand, having in mind the, um, the, the waging war um, coming from Russia against Ukraine. So we also need to defend our European values here uh, mm. before they're troubled by food. So you, you just mentioned, uh, mentioned asylum. Another uh, argument against a visa ban, it would make it more difficult for Russian dissidents or Kremlin critics to flee their country. That's a fair point, isn't it? No, but it has no no connection. I mean, visa policy is one thing, but asylum um, procedures are another thing. So there's no linkage between uh, those two. So you can you still use visa policy or visa leverage as as an as an instrument without having um, influences or even bad influences mm. on uh, asylum procedures. So there's no linkage between that, and thus there is no. Uh, this is not actually an argument uh, against having a visa ban, uh, a gradual approach on a visa ban. OK, uh, but asylum aside, do you think it is appropriate to punish ordinary Russians for the deeds of their government? Well, I think if we look at those who normally use visa, especially when we look at touristic visas uh, and coming from the member states that have, of course, put forward um, the proposal on having a tourist ban, but then we do have, the, of course, the discussion whether it's, it's, uh, it needs to be used sensible, yeah? because there is an argument on the ground that um, uh, we try to reach, uh, let's say, Russian uh, dissidents and opponents uh, in order to support them uh, in their fight against their government. But nevertheless, those who travel the most, especially to European countries, are basically uh, not those who are not aware of what their country and their yeah. government is doing. So it is indeed a way of also, let's say, enlarging uh, the list of um, uh, peoples on the sanction list with a targeted uh, and meaningful instrument here. Lena Dupont, the member of the European Parliament for Germany's Christian Democrats, thank you very much. You're welcome.